I told Marissa we may need to call Doc and see what we need to do. On the darts, I think I'm just going to have to dart him. I don't. Mr. Haas, I didn't explain very good why he ended up with Big Joe. They're coming. That was a, peeled the orange. That was a nice view. <laughs> I peeled the orange and then we got, we got to the gate, but I was looking at the water. Are your hands full? Well, yeah. Belle, you're getting big. You guys remember Belle Star. This is a, the first cow that we ever lost a calf from, ever. Um, back early this summer, you can go back and watch that, or in early of 2023 summer. Um, and then right after that, this one, which is peaches, went into labor. It was one of the wildest things ever. I was out there filming her because she had just lost her calf. And while I'm sitting there filming and actually talking to, to the camera, peaches starts having her calf and has a completely normal calf, mm -hmm. um, unlike Bell Star. But my, my point is, is Bell Star looks very healthy, very full in her third trimester. A pregnancy she's uh she's one of our favorites original too as well part of my first five but it'll be good to see her have another calf again healthy calf so you can see that big old belly right there that's a good sign that she got pregnant again which will be a big joe uh calf this year and the buddies there texas 11 and big joe everybody's kind of wet today been getting some rain, which is great. Here comes Christy, usually the first one, of course. Everybody's being a little pokey this morning. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty, Marissa's in the truck hanging out with me. Gotta start evaluating. When we got back from Denver, really it's just a refresher on a lot of things and, oh gosh, give it. Just threw my phone down. All right, so the goal today is what Marissa and I are doing We'll go over here and show these hooligans behind me. You got the jumper. Problem, Mama. We're going to have to do something with you. And then we've got uh, not the latest born, but this is the 32 cow. Uh, that was the latest of 2023, the last one born of 2023, our 32 cow. We were so worried about she was just huge forever for months and months. We're like, are you ever going to have a cow? Well, she did. And there's a uh, little 32 heifer, big one Mama here. But uh, the goal today is for Marissa and I is when we got back from Denver, we kind of started evaluating our animals and kind of just looking them over and whatnot. I noticed something I thought was interesting on some of these, uh, some of our heifers uh, from Canada is I noticed that some of them look a little thinner than the rest. Not that much difference in, in, in weight, but I did notice some thinning up in their um, high hip bones and um up in that uh, loin area and so i told marissa we may need to text doc and ask him and call doc and see what we need to do and send him some pictures so that's what i did i sent him some pictures of our hey yeah we've been operating all day oh well i won't keep you long um on the darts i think i'm just gonna have to dart them i don't you know me, I don't have a squeeze chute here. So um, my question is, I know the darts are hard to find, but I think I may have some that I want to get in some of these Canadian females. Um, can you put the dosage together, like the sidectin and the ivermectin? No, you'll have to put one in one and one in another. Okay, okay. Um, as far as where should I try to shoot them at? Hip. In the hip, the high hip? No, not high. Uh, in, the, in that big bat the lateralis muscle on the side of the, of the hip. Okay. Between their, uh, between their pin dip bone and tail area? Between their hook bone and uh, the side bone and 
skid bowlers. It's kind of a triangle there. Okay. I'll see what I can do. See if I can get a hold of some darts or how many I have at least. I sent him some pictures of our, some of our Canada heifers, like the ones with the double. And he said, you need to give them some warmer again. So we just worked our bison, I think December 2nd. And so what we're doing is we're driving around taking notes on the females that need some warmer. Because what we're going to have to do is, we don't have a squeeze chute here. We're working on that. We've got a specific company that we're working with on a hydraulic squeeze chute, but we don't have one here. So Doc always brings his down, but he said, you need some warmer in some of those females. Well, it would be very stressful and a lot of work to go catch a bunch of them, round them up, load them on a trailer and take them somewhere. So what we're going to do is because I bought a dart gun this past summer, we're going to use it. So what we're doing is driving around, looking at the females that need warmer, we're writing them down. Once we have an idea of how many are going to get some darts, we've got to go find the darts and hopefully buy some. I have a couple left from last summer when I had to dart Dunbar and get some antibiotics in him whenever he injured his eye. He's doing so much better. You can't even hardly see he had an injury. But I had to dart him then. That was the first time I had to dart one of our bison. But now we have a dart gun, which is a good thing. The only problem is, is right now, darts are very low in america and hard to get and even doc said that so we're gonna see how many darts we have left two we got to go get the wormer the dewormer we have to go get it so marissa and i are gonna probably gonna run to the local feed store and hopefully they have darts and they have the wormer and we're gonna try to get some in these females today so some of these females are pregnant some of them um hopeful that are pregnant we shall see um hopefully you want every female pregnant who was with these females this summer was Dunbar and Haas were with them this summer. So the South Dakota females, nine of those, 10 of the Canadian ones. So you got 19 females plus some more of ours that we raised or were with Dunbar and Haas this summer. We dewormed them December 2nd, but they're still struggling a little bit. We want to get on top of this before they can really break down. Um, we still got, a, you know, two or three months left of winter. And this is when animals can struggle a little bit as far as a parasite load, whatever's in their gut. That's what we're gonna do. I know I'm long-winded, but I have to explain everything to you guys on what we're doing, why we're doing it, and so on. That's uh, what my wife and I, my ranch hand partner, CEO, is helping. Uh, that's what we're gonna do together today. Hopefully, these females, because they're first-timers, like this one right here, hopefully, we can maybe have our first calf in April. Never had a calf in April, but the earlier, the better. They should start in April, May-ish, but earlier, the better is better for us here, um, which is a natural time for the bison, whether in Yellowstone, Custer State Park, all those places, they should start calving in April. But for us, we don't want those late ones like June, July, because July, it's very hot and hard on these mamas and the calves, red dogs as well. So let's get to work. Yeah. Oh, look at that calf over there. He's He's rubbing on the ground. Still on ice. Ugh. Looks rough from in the truck. You want to give me a hug? 
I think I'll pass. <sighs> There's still ice in the bottom of that. Is there really? Yeah, it was setting on the ice, which actually helped me. But I don't know how to pick it up unless you want to help me. Know how much help I'll These are about 200 pounds. Well, it's I gone down some. This is set in water and they've licked it, but. I don't know if I will be of much they... assistance. She's coming for it. They're needing something. Those are Canadians. Oh, uh, they are the both ones that can't. Yeah. yeah, they're the ones that, that need it. She looks like she's pregnant. It's 116, but. 117, I don't know if she's pregnant, but she's up here licking it too. It's funny, both of them came right up to it. Came right up to it. Hmm. Well, I gotta clean all my hands off. It smell like molasses and mud. I really like to move it because it may just end up back down there. But can you use the... what if I pushed it right over, over here? <clears throat> that way, it's out of this yeah, low can, area where it can roll and fall back down in there. Yeah. Do you need to help you? Uh. I mean, not that I can provide that much assistance, but I can try. That's okay. But They're yeah. back up here licking it though. It's good. So these molasses tubs, say molasses for whatever. I don't know really what you call them, but oh now Texas cows up here. They're all coming. <laughs> oh here comes Haas. Anyways, it's just good protein. It's a supplement. Instead of coming bringing cubes out every day, you can supplement them with some uh, protein. Uh, it's good for their hair. It's good for their uh, metabolism, their diet, uh, microbiology inside their stomach. There's Haas. Everybody's come over here. Dusty. Get back, Haas. He makes me nervous. Yeah, he just kind of. I got a question from a follower the other day and um, I'll kind of step out here it's raining a little bit but I'll step out here and show you well here's a perfect example this is a uh, it's one of our Canada heifers so there are two-year-old heifers um, in 21 we bought we kind of went all in and bought a really good breeding stock of heifers uh, right here so anytime you see a double yellow tag they're from Canada you see a double white tag most of them are going to be from south dakota so we kind of went in and did that bought some really good breeding heifers from uh, some friends of ours dakota pure bison slash antelope creek bison uh, near mission south dakota but what happened is and, and and this is all preference this is all so thanks for my wife shut the truck off um but basically uh, we don't do double tags, okay? So what we do typically on all of our tagging situations is we just go by gender. Of course, there's a lot of detail in the tags, but we just go by gender, basically. We do females on their left, males on their right, and we do just one tag. So here's an example of one of the Canadians. So she's got two yellow tags. So what the yellow tag represents is um, the Canadian number. So those were their, the, their previous owners, which is Wolverine Bison. I'm just going to follow her around here. That was their thing. Now they all have another white tag on them. So the white tag was so that they could cross the border on these Canada heifers. So there's a lot of work that goes into getting animals uh, uh obviously from canada or another country uh and but our vet doc parsons did a lot of that work and he was good friends with the wolverine bison guys and so 
there's a lot of paperwork that goes on to cross that border well they have to have a u.s tag i believe and then their own ranch tag which is what they have um, from their own ranch so all of the canadians have actually three ear tags our south dakota ones have two ear tags so they didn't have to have multiple tags so one from canada one from the u.s on all these wolverines that are behind me and then like a lot of ours here like this one uh, just have singles and then here's peaches right here she just has one tag so that's kind of why we do it see it's on her left ear thanks for the questions and uh, concerns on tagging that's just the way we do it um, some people do it differently uh, but that's kind of how we roll Okay, so Wolverine one nineteen thirty two. Just she's just always huge. <laughs> she is. She's just a big cow. Goodness. Do you have any yellow tags over there on your side? Uh, I mean, yeah. There's one, two, three, four, five, back six. Over there. Yeah. Over there. They kind yeah. of they kind of all group together usually. The white tags are holding up pretty well, which are. <clears throat> Our South Dakota females are holding up pretty well for this winter. And they're pretty big. Let's drive over here and look. This fifteen oh one. Uh huh. So look at these. She look okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's one right here. Her number's on the other she side. Looks of okay. She's not. She may turn when these others approach her. Yeah, there she goes. 113. <clears throat> She's all right. What do you think, hun? Uh, 138 and 139, yes. Need it? Yes. She had a late calf, so. Pulling her down a little bit? Probably weighing her down a little bit. <clears throat> but um, 138 here for sure needs it 139 the mama i think that calf still needs to keep her or that one still needs to stay on mom look at this one's legs tell his legs look how light colored oh yeah kind of wild like a burly little guy that is or that's a sorry grand champion she was a grand champion heifer back in the 2019 2020 she's right here she got a nice looking calf. He probably could be weaned. <laughs> Let me see it real quick. This guy. Look at those legs. Huh? It's funny. So another quapaw heifer right here. I talked about in my previous video. Let's pull. Here's some Canadians right here. Oh, there's another one. What's her tag number? She one, looks pregnant. One, oh, for sure. 118. 118. Pregnant. This one is not, this 113 here. She doesn't look bad. So we're here, we're just writing stuff down. And I have needs vaccinations. These are questionable, but pregnant on 118. <coughs> right here. She's holding up well too. Here's another yellow tag. So some people, and I I will say that I didn't do a very good job of explaining. I got distracted with all the ice that we had to break. But this guy here, Mr. Haas, I didn't explain very good why he ended up with Big Joe. As you can see, he's still sassy and has some attitude. But Haas, uh, got, he's been with Dunbar for a long time, especially during breeding season. But we took Haas and Dunbar and moved them up to the front with some females and some yearling or and some weaning calves. And what we did with Haas is in Dunbar is we wanted to put him back on a feed regiment to try to get some weight gain basically back on him. And we felt like he got to a point where he was looking good, which he looks good right now. And we felt like it was time for him to go and leave Dunbar alone. And so we put Haas out here with 
the big Joe herd, obviously lots of more animals and just get him out of there uh, around us all the time because Hoss is just Hoss. But felt like he was gained some weight and his hair looked good and it was just time for him to get back to the pasture. So that's why we put Hoss out here. Okay, I can get out now. It's a little bit safer when he's not around. This cow's watching me. Texas 11, huge cow. Yeah, so Haas was just in the right condition to let him go back out here. And the reason that we can put Haas out here, he's still over there. The reason we can put Haas in with Big Joe is because there's a big age difference. So Haas will be three this spring. Big Joe will be nine this spring. That's correct. Big Joe will be nine this spring and Haas is three. So there's a big gap difference. And so... Uh, you know, people say, well, what are you going to do with Big Joe? What are you going to do with Dunbar? Well, Big Joe and Dunbar are our guys. They're our breed bulls. And they're going to stay that way. Some people get rid of their breed bulls at like eight or nine years old, which means that we would sell them to a big trophy hunt. Some people would um, use them for processing and get a full body mount or a, a, uh, a shoulder mount. But we're obviously not going to do that. We believe that as long as Big Joe and Dunbar are doing their jobs, you know, they may have to get tested, semen tested every now and then. Uh, but as long as these females are still getting pregnant and having calves, we're going to keep those guys as long as we can. Now, I will say about Dunbar, Dunbar is kind of a question because whenever we have two bulls here at the Ponderosa, it is an issue especially with our regenerative ag that we're trying to accomplish, those regenerative goals, and our proper grazing mechanisms management at the Ponderosa, it is very difficult to do that with two mature bulls. We've got to, we want Dunbar to have his own herd, basically. But if we want to do things right at the Ponderosa here, and we want to take care of the land, the soil, the water, and do all those things that Marissa and I are trying to accomplish and preserve the land, it's going to be very difficult to breed bulls. So we've got to create another herd and another place. We're trying to find another place. or We're, we're working on things to try to get Dunbar moved to another place where he can have his own herd. Big Joe's going to be here um, with... Looks like Haas probably is what we're looking at. And then maybe start a new herd or move some of these females because we need to get some animals off this property to do the right things and the right management strategies. We need to pull some off and maybe we can create our own with Dunbar. You guys let us know what you think. We're uh, pretty open-minded, but the thing is, is land, right? You got to either go buy land, which is expensive, or to lease land. We are, we would love to buy land, but that's that's an expensive thing it's uh two it's finding it and then uh you know making your land payments and stuff like that keeping up with it um so if we did have some more land we would be able to really put dunbar and some more females and you could even purchase more females if we wanted to so there's a lot of things like that and then finding good lease land if you do find good lease land you got to have good fencing right you got to have water you got to have all those things established in order to raise bison. You can't just throw them out on the pasture because you can get away with that with cattle and some some half-do cattle fences. But you can't do that with bison. We don't want them wandering all over the county. So those are things that Marissa and I are looking at is places to buy land, places to lease, but then you have all those things that go with that. Um, it would be nice to have more land and more bison. That I think that's our goal. Um, is that short term? Is that long term? I don't know. But, it, you know, that's the thing about when you do this, you can only have so many animals at the Ponderosa. And we really evaluated that and had to look at what we do when we sat down with Ethan McJames at the NRCS office and uh, really crunched our numbers and looked at our stocking rates. And you can go back and watch that video. Uh, we can put it here in the description for you. But all those things. So, anyways, 32 cows loving this now that I pulled it out of the water. So, Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your um, opinion on things and uh, love the feedback as well. Um, of course, we love what we do, raising the American bison, but we want to do it the right way, which is taking care of the land. And then with that, having some awesome bison.
good old head scratching, eh? I don't know if you want her doing that, Dusty. It's like she might almost break it off. 